Susie Batiz is the self-made millionaire entrepreneur behind the brands Poopery and Supernatural. For decades, Susie worked her way up the ladder, driven by fear and an overall belief in her unworthiness. At 38, everything came crashing down when she experienced her second bankruptcy. With nothing left to lose, Susie began following her intuition, only pursuing ideas that made her feel alive. One of these alive ideas turned out to be Poopery, a business now worth over $400 million. Susie's joined us today to share how she transformed her belief system in the hopes that we may all more deeply honor our truth and create a life in alignment with joy. Hi guys, you're watching the season premiere episode of Bizen TV, and we're here with entrepreneur Susie Batiz. What a joy having you here. <laughs> so Susie, you founded Poopery. Yes. and built a business worth over $400 million. Mm -hmm. And most people would think, oh, you know, wow, that's what a claim to fame, but you have so much more that you're sharing with the world now. So mm -hmm. can you take us kind of back to how things started for you and, and how you kind of shifted your energy? Yeah, so um, most of my life, I've been an entrepreneur. My first idea was when I was 17, I made a pair of denim shoes called Guess. They wanted to see them and my mom says, you can't go, you're a little girl from Arkansas. So mm -hmm. I never went, but that just shows you that I was always a maker and always doing. But most of my life, I thought that the making and doing was gonna get me something. Mm -hmm. Like I was gonna be, you know, I'd finally have money and the money meant happiness to me. Cause that's so, what we're taught, right? Yeah. Growing up, we're like, okay, so you have to make money, you have to be successful. Yes. And you're like, I need to please my parents and society. Yeah, so, I just knew money was the ticket out. Yes. Like, I, I was married, bankrupt and divorced by the time I was 20. And, you know, my life just went on sort of like whenever you're skiing and you kind of have the downhill tumble. Yeah. I finally started stabilizing, but I was always either selling something out of the trunk of my car or I had a business idea because mm -hmm. I just knew it was going to get me out so I was always struggling surviving going and yeah, then when being I was, like survival mode right oh, yeah. just like reacting and I found that even in like my own life when one bad thing happens you get kind of down you know mm -hmm. and then you're like making not making as good of decisions about something yeah. else and it's almost like you get caught yes in this negativity you do and and what I've seen is there's never a time that you stop so it's just like, I'm just running, 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 grasping, just super desperate, like mm -hmm. anything like, oh, great idea, I'll make money doing that. You know, right. it's just like this real graspy feeling and energy. You know, I, I, I was good at making money, mm -hmm. wasn't so good at keeping it back then. Yeah. And uh, the stock market crashed. And I literally lost everything. And oh uh, still like right now, I kind of gasp. Like, you feel it. You can't imagine what that was. I was literally done with everything in business. And I mm -hmm. call it now the luxury of losing everything mm -hmm. because I had that sort of stopping point. And what I knew is I was not gonna go back there. I didn't yeah. care. So I really became happy inside. And I discovered that happiness really is from inside and it's not from anything outside myself. Mm -hmm. So I began this inner journey and I was happy and I had no desire for money, just, I, I didn't need it. I needed enough to feed my family and that's it. And I was really content. And uh, it was really one of the greatest times in my life. I'm sitting home, I'm listening to Gangaji, you know, and Lotus for real, yeah. just blissed out. Mm -hmm. And then I was at a dinner party and my brother-in-law says, can bathroom odor be trapped? And I was like, I felt like the thought. zing at my arm. Oh, wow. I felt everything kind of going high def. And I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what do you mean you can do that? I, and I, I'm like, I work with oils because oils were my hobby. And um, I never thought about it being a business. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Mm -hmm. So it took me about nine months to create the formula. My husband at the time walks out of the bathroom one day and he's like, oh my God, we're gonna be millionaires. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, do you realize what you've done? Like you've taken the smell out it's of like it crap. works. Yeah, it, it works. works. I was like, it does? It was like this shocking <laughs> moment. And that's when I knew that out of all of the struggling, this number one had been conceived differently mm -hmm. because the way I birthed the idea was from a place of peace and freedom and contentment. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds so cliche, but you don't know how long it's gonna last. Mm -hmm. Everything can get swept out. You know, mm -hmm. we don't wanna sit around and fear that. Right. But if it does, what I realized is that I didn't have a strong foundation mm -hmm. underneath me. That's why it was a total collapse. Right now, if, you know, everything, you know, 
went bad tomorrow. I, I know who I am inside. Right. And I'm not going to be crushed the way I was. Well, I'll be sad. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do I want that to happen? No. Right. But um, I'm, I'm in a way different place because mm -hmm. I've, I, I value and have built a strong inner foundation that I didn't have back then. Right. Yeah. yeah. That makes so much sense. Building on the inner foundation yeah. versus trying to build everything out there and ignoring how we really feel. Yes. From the inside out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking of intuition, mm -hmm. when it comes to a lot of people, like when they think about intuition, they're like, is that my intuition or is that my fear talking? Mm -hmm. How do you know the difference? Um, so one thing I do is whenever I feel fear, for example, if it's, if it's financial fear, I'll call my accountant mm -hmm. and I'll say, you know, I woke up this morning, I had this really weird fear about finances. Yeah. Can we talk through this? Yeah. Oh, and I if, love that. Yeah. Not living in fear, but being like, what's the solution? Reality. I can figure this out. Yeah, yeah, so either one or two things happen when you're afraid. Either you really should be afraid. There's something that is threatening mm -hmm. around you, which usually it's not. So that's easy to make sure, look around. Yeah. And the second thing is when you get ready to expand, for example, standing on the edge of a cliff, you're going to jump. Yeah. You know it's going to feel exhilarating, mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to say, I did it. But it's going to be scary as can be, mm -hmm. right, before you do it. And there's no way to get it. around that moment. No, but right? that fear is it's good mm -hmm. because okay. it keeps us from doing dangerous things. Yeah. So I say, if you're afraid, look around. Is there anything that really you should be afraid from? My mentor, Gay Hendricks, taught me that. And if you shouldn't be afraid, then know and commit to yourself, oh, I'm in a state of expansion. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to be nervous. You know, like right now I feel a little sweaty. It's I like, do too, guys. Yeah. And it's fun because yeah. we're both doing something. You know, I'm doing something that I haven't ever done with you. We're creating this yeah. new, you know, whatever we're creating here. We're expanding in real time. Yeah. With you guys. Yeah. yeah. And that gets you a little ooh, it does. kind of feeling. And it's actually alive. It's, it's, a, it's a fun feeling. So to realize, I just kind of go, okay, that's what's happening here. I know I'm not in yeah, danger. That's what this is. We're safe. We're in a we're beautiful safe. home. Yeah. Yeah, We've got wonderful so. people around us, but yeah, it's just yeah. that excited energy. Yes. So I've been listening to you to speak about, um, what was it, expansion and like joy and just how hard it can be to keep getting bigger, yes. kind of on that note. So what, what is that about? Why is it so hard? Yeah. Do you know, Susie, why is it so hard? Why is it Tell so us. hard? <laughs> well, my mentor, Gay Hendricks, he's his PhD in psychology, so I refer to him. Mm -hmm. But what he says is that our minds have been programmed because of evolution through for fear and survival. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've been, we know how to do that really well. We know how to be afraid and we know how to survive. Mm -hmm. That fear kept us alive, right? right? What we haven't expanded to within our consciousness is abundance, love, and joy, mm. right? Because we've yeah. been mostly, as, as a species, we've been trying to make it on the planet. Yeah, trying so to our, survive, yeah. wars, like all these things all going the things. on. things. So our brains are wired that way. Mm -hmm. So he says what happens is you have to rewire your brain. So one of my commitments is a commitment I learned from him. I commit to expanding my capacity for abundance, love, and joy every day as I inspire others to do the same. Mm -hmm. So my practice is nowadays less about being afraid, but more about can I keep expanding into receiving more. So how do you practice that? expansion and like how can we start practicing that mm, with a commitment like okay. that commitment I commit to expanding my capacity you know my daughter just moved to Brooklyn and you know you're you're she's finding her way and she'll she'll get scared and I said can you commit to expanding your capacity to wow. receive this new life and she's like oh yeah you know it's just really we can remind each other mm -hmm. it's like you have a lot of good coming in can you keep being open to receiving more and more. Because back in the past, I would sabotage myself. Right. Just so I, I wouldn't, because it's, you know, a lot of it has to do, I've done a lot of core inner work, but about un, being unworthy, guilt and shame, and you know, all of those patterns come up. Right. So we feel like we're not worth that. So my practice is just to keep proving to myself that yeah, I am worthy of receiving more. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. That's it, so awesome. It, and it's a practice. So that has been really quite a very, um, big inner journey, you know, can I keep expanding mm -hmm. into into goodness? You know, I know how to struggle. I know how to do survival. Right. Really good. Right. I'm really good at that. So. Right. <laughs> so it's like looking forward to learning how to do everything else. Everything the love else. And the yeah. Joy and expansion. Yeah. That's a fun lesson to learn. It's a great lesson. Yeah. So speaking of being on that path, 
you talk a lot about resonance yes and using resonance to determine hey is this good for me or not and mm. can you explain that to us yeah so i had this idea one of my friends asked me how do how do you know which idea to go towards mm -hmm. like in business you know we'll be brainstorming in a marketing meeting and i can feel when an idea is what i call alive so i started wondering if ideas were alive and I called Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, he's a cellular biologist, and I said, are ideas alive? And he said, why are you asking? I said, well, I have a theory that some ideas work out because they feel alive to me. Hmm. And the ones that don't, that I just do with my strategic mind, don't seem to have the resilience. Right. And he said, everything is a living vibration. And then he taught me in physics about resonance and dissonance. And resonance is when two energy waves are traveling at the same speed and the same uh, like wavelength, those two together create more energy together than they do apart. Okay. But what resonated for me, I was like, that's why I feel alive. Mm -hmm. I literally feel like I have more energy. So I came up with um, the way I determine an alive idea is that number one, I have a body sensation. Like normally chill bumps, you know, you're talking yeah. and you go, oh my God, I just got chills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that to me is like, that's alive. Okay. okay. Something's resonating in your body. Okay. The second one is that um, the idea won't leave you alone. Like it just keeps coming around, mm -hmm. you know, you'll notice, you know, probably for this show. You're yes. like, it just kept. For like two years, I was like obsessed, you guys. <laughs> and yeah. then it was real and I'm like, what? Exactly, so, yeah. that's it. You keep mm -hmm. following that because it keeps coming back. Number third, you have a heightened sense of energy. You okay. probably found yourself researching, you're looking online, yes. who else is doing this? Has anybody done this? Can this be true? Yeah. You're doing that. Like an obsession or you just like can't stop learning about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's what you do. And then what I've noticed is when you get all of those, I keep following that. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh my gosh, this is really what you know this to me is alive oh that's wonderful so that's where that came yeah. from so it really is operating from the inside out mm -hmm. rather than in western society we're taught to operate from the outside in right what do you think of me do you approve of me mm -hmm. is this what you want is do you think this is a good idea and all of that for me set me up to fail totally because i yeah. had nothing inside of me that too. yeah yeah and it's like, okay, am I successful? Well, what kind of car do I have? Yes. What has my house? Do I have a relationship? Am I married? Or whatever, you know, yeah. those parameters you place on yourself are. And yep. it's just not, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Right? It's the opposite. Yeah, that's what I found. I love it. So I, you know, I expand into nice things because I want them, not mm -hmm. because it's gonna impress you. Right. You know, it's literally like, oh, can I do this? Because this makes me feel yeah. good. Like, I, I like happy. this. Yeah. yeah, I like this. Like, I need this because if people come to my house and I don't have this, they might not like me. It's such a different vibe. It's such a different vibe. Right? Yeah. Like, ugh, it even feels sick. Yeah. So, okay, well, what other, what other tools kind of help you with that? Pip? You know, one thing, I meditate every day. Mm -hmm. It's a non-negotiable for me. You know, I wake up, I, I have my routine down. I'm not a real routine-oriented person except mm -hmm. my mornings. Yeah. And I get up and make a cup of tea and then I meditate. That to me is something that brings me inside and connects me into that part of myself that is true and I trust. Yeah. So the outside world goes away, I just come inside and it's like a little GPS point that can lead me throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I really have done a lot of coaching and inner work kind of going in going, what purpose would I want this to serve? Mm -hmm. Like I never had a time when I lost all my money was when I finally stopped for a minute. It like forces you. Forces, yeah. I was forced to stop. We you're don't like, want that I don't to happen have money to, to people. Go out right now, I don't have money to, so you're just like at home and just like thinking and processing and growing. Yes. You're like, what do I want? Who am I? Yes. Oh, that's so valuable. Yeah, yeah. Just to come inside so and valuable. stop and go, hold yeah. on, what do I want? Mm -hmm. Why am I showing up in the world? And I want to share my story just so other people, are, see, I, I get a little emotional yeah. for inspiration. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a serving. It's not something that I want you to think I'm some big fancy whatever. Yeah. So you can think that if you want, but it's really like here, this is my experience. Mm, yeah, I get a little, and mm. maybe it'll help you. That to That's me wonderful. feels, it feels more pure to me. You inspired me so much when I met you, when we were here for the Almost 30 podcast mm -hmm. and the way that, you have operated with every person that I've seen you interact with, just behind the scenes. I mean, you, you are so alive. Mm -hmm. You are living that. And I think for anybody who's been through something or going through something right now, to look at you and be like, you know, 
we can arrive wherever it is that makes us feel fulfilled. Yeah. There's always hope. Yeah. And we have the power to do it. We don't need to wait for something to change or for someone to come get us. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we had everybody just doing what turns them on, mm -hmm. even if you started on the side as a hobby first, mm -hmm. but eventually if you can move into that, think about how much light the world would be. It would be like glowing. Glowing. And everyone would be happy and there would be like no gossip. And no. no, because all those negative things just come from like unfulfillment, right? Being they like, do. I'm in the wrong thing, but I can't even see that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Yes, and we get stuck in those grooves. Mm -hmm. And then we realize what's happening is what is it really costing us? I always say if right. energy was the new currency, like how much would you have? Mm -hmm. If your aliveness or if your energy level was what you valued the most instead of your bank account, like how rich are you, really? Right. So rich. It's a good question. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, hold on, I am. You're doing right now what turns you on, mm -hmm. right? So you yeah. would consider yourself rich. It's like, you know, I did it. I tried so it. So wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true because then you just, you feel happy every time you're doing it. Yeah. Versus if I, if I was like an accountant right now, like I'm terrible with numbers, oh. maybe I'd, you know, have a lot of money, but I'd be miserable. You'd be miserable. You yeah. Know? And we all have to just be really authentic and love ourselves enough to care about, you to know, choose what yourself. we really want. Choose yeah. yourself over, yeah, what everybody mm -hmm. else thinks. So tell us about your theory on aliveness, because I love what you have to say about that. Mm. Well, I, I really do believe that if you focus on what turns you on. So for example, in the past, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't even know what turned me on. You know, I, I needed to make money to get out. That was mm -hmm. my strategy. You know, I knew if I made money, I'm going to be all those dreams that I had in my head. You know, I'm going to be rich and I'm finally going to be happy and I'm going to be somebody in the world. Yeah. I just knew it. That was going to happen. And then, you know, after the bankruptcy, I was like, you know, I can't do that anymore. So I'm just going to do what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Period. And I've told my employees for years, you know, I have my second employee and I would tell her the minute I'm not happy, I'm not going to be here anymore. So um, that's what I call liveness, mm -hmm. is when we are choosing ourselves, when we are happy over someone else, what happens is, is we have literally more life force energy. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, another thing that Dr. Lipton told me is that a cell in a body has two states. It's either growing or it's protecting. Wow. And it cannot do both of those states at the same time. Wow. So think about that. Growing or protecting. Are you in growing mode or are you in protecting mode? Oh my goodness. I know. And so, when we're getting out of our comfort zone, first instinct can't help it protect. Protect, yeah. Like, oh, am I, you know, you That's what thinking. you've been doing. That's yes. why we do everything everybody wants. Yes. I'll keep doing it because I make money and everybody will think I'm great. That's all yeah. protection. But growing mode is, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for another job. I'm mm -hmm. going to look for a new career. I'm mm -hmm. going to see what's around that other horizon. You yes. know, that's exciting. That's growing. Mm -hmm. So really right now you can ask yourself, am I in growth mode or am I in protection mode? And what percent wow. of that time? And if you just look at that honestly, mm -hmm. I would suspect right now you're in a big path of growing with the show launching. But Susie, to be honest, I am oscillating. Yeah. Like what we talked about, and the expansion will. and all that. I mean, just to be real, I am oscillating because it's like exciting. Yeah. But then every time there's a new horizon, it's like, was it really going to work? Yeah. Can I really do it? You don't know. You know, you have that little, the little fear protective yes. voice. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that fear protective voice is really just sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So transitioning to talking about where you are now mm. in the present, what you've built, this beautiful home that really looks like a reflection of that easy, beautiful, like authentic energy. It's so mm -hmm. spiritual here. It's it used to be a church. I mean, yeah. wow, it doesn't get much more spiritual than that <laughs> to live in a place, you know, that used to be a church. So what, how did that happen? What a live moment for you. It's like, oh, I'm gonna live here. Yeah, I had heard about someone that grew up in a church and yeah. I was like, I didn't even know you could live in a church. Yeah. So I started looking online and I thought I was gonna buy a little white church out in the country as Cute. a second home. Mm -hmm. I was like, that'll look good. And yeah. I saw this place online and it was a few million dollars and it was an old, you know how you look up old things? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if it was still for sale. And so I just missed it. Two years later, I'm getting my hair cut and my hairdresser says, I've got to help a friend move. They're moving out of the basement of a church they're trying to sell. And I said, what are you talking about? It ends up being the same church. And the same one that you'd seen two years ago? Yeah. 
Oh my god. Yeah, so I call the realtor. I'm telling my synchronicity story. Yeah, like, like dude, this crazy is meant to be. Yeah. yeah. And the minute I walked in, I was just like, yes. And it when I look back at pictures, I did not see what it really looked like. I saw this. Really? Oh yeah. When I look back now, I'm like, oh my gosh. Everybody in my life thought it was a bad idea. My mm -hmm. realtor said, I'm not writing it. You know, you're a single woman, it's not in a great neighborhood, it's not a good investment, everything. She's like, I'm not I'm not writing this up for you, this contract. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. I mean that's how much people were against this. Yeah. And I said, I I'm buying it. Mm -hmm. I know that. It was one of those everything in my body said yes. So because I've built up the string, mm -hmm. when everybody says no, that doesn't stop me. And what I've realized is, you know, you could tell the story of me remodeling the church, but it was really, mm, yeah, it was really the opposite. Yeah. Like the church remodeled me. In what way? In that I, you know, I was a mother with children and a wife, and I had this identity that even though I was doing things for myself, this was a time when I really got to have everything just for me. Yeah. Like the, the coffee table I want, the couch I want, the candle I want. Yeah. And it sounds so little, but as no, women. No, it doesn't. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, but as women, we're so used to giving and giving and giving. And plus, I was able to just rediscover who I was in the space. Who am I without all of that? You know, my children are grown now. Yeah. My, you know, I'm not married. And it's the first time in my life that I was really able to just be with me, 100% mm -hmm. me. And you may say, oh, during, you know, after the, the bankruptcy, you know, I was still married and had a family. Yeah. Now it's just different. So the church really held me in this beautiful womb so that it, I transitioned. I call her the temple of transformation because oh she transformed me from one way of living and being wow. into this new reality that I have. Wow. As I was remodeling it, what I was remodeling inside myself at the same time mm -hmm. is the bigger story for me. Oh my gosh. Well, Susie, I cannot think of a better place for us to have the season premiere episode than mm. here. So thank you for opening your home at, as a hopefully a womb and transition space for all of us to kind of transform oh, through this season and grow together. I just get chill bumps. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah thank that's you for, super exciting. Just for everything, for sharing your story. And, and um, I love, I think everything you have to say is just, it resonates so much, mm. makes so much sense. It's so beautiful. And thank you. I know it's gonna help a lot of, a lot of other people mm. in our community too. So now we actually get to see some of the beautiful rooms and areas where you live and create. Yay. So let's go on this tour guys. Yay. Excited. Let's go. So Susie, tell us about this beautiful room. So this room is my meditation room, but it was the old um, choir loft. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was where the choir sang. And this was like a little room where they hung all the choir robes. And what I love about the room, first of all, I love all the light in the windows. Yeah. I love that it's small. I use it as a meditation room because it also has all of the original plaster. So this plaster is probably 100 years old. Oh my I know. gosh. So what I love about it is it still has a lot of that original energy of the church mm -hmm. um, in it. And it's really a serene place. Well, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, and you know what this is? This is an old, um, you know, kapal that they burn in churches? They burn kapal, the smoke, I didn't know in that. Catholic churches. Oh, is that what that's called? Yeah. That they swing? Yeah, oh, so, so that's, okay. this is a vintage one from a, ah. an old Catholic church, which I thought was fun. Wow, it's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, so who knows what size it's church that was in your church. Wow, okay. <laughs> exactly. That, that's so cool. Wow. It's fun. Now I'd like to show you my singing bowls. Oh, these are so cool. Yeah. You've seen them before, but I have. <laughs> Meditation. And this is the crown chakra. This is all of your messages from the divine. Let's see this. that like, one roll, roll, roll. yeah it's amazing like opening us to greater wisdom right mm -hmm. and mm. so I, I just love all the sounds of them so you really I just kind of play and 
play around with them. They're really fun. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay, well now that our energy is cleared, let's go check out your creative space. Oh, you show us your office. My favorite. <laughs> So, Susie, your newest project is Supernatural Queen. Yes. So cool. And this, like, they sold out in two hours on Goop. Yes. Right? Like, I mean, you're yeah. just talking about expanding and expanding. So, <laughs> show us this. This is where you create, right? It is. Yeah. So, I've always, I always tell people, go towards what turns you on, what mm -hmm. your passion is. My passion was always oils, but I never thought about making money from them. I just made yeah. stuff for me, you know, because I love the way that oils fill in my body. Mm -hmm. Like, I resonate with them. Mm -hmm. And that's how Poopery started. But Supernatural, yeah, is my latest love child. I wondered if I could make a line of cleaning products mm -hmm. that had the lowest carbon footprint, that was 100% natural, but that smelled, I just let you smell some of these, that freaking fantastic. Like, that, like nothing you ever smelled like, before. Yeah, like have you yeah. guys ever um, sniffed on like a cleaner? Like it's yeah. disgusting, they smell terrible, you don't even want to be near them. These smell like you you could wear them on your body. Like, yes. Yeah, like yeah. I might want to wear that one. Yeah, like and this is wood floor cleaner. Yeah, it was so fun. What a nice change. It, it is pace. a change, and I knew I was Seriously. onto something when I called all my friends and I said, "Okay, I've sat around and sm sniffed my bathroom cleaner all weekend." And they're like, like what? I just sit around going, I'm "Worried about you?" Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's all natural, you right? Know, but I was just like, "This smells so good." Right, and then they realize, "Oh, it's because it's essential oils." Exactly. So yeah. cool. Yeah. So, so cool. People think that I I make things to smell good, but that's not what I do. I make things to work and then I, I work with the oils that are effective for whatever if I'm trying to control That's odor. Awesome. For example, poopery, I didn't make it to smell good. I made it to control odor. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of tweak the oils where they smelt good as well, the layering. Right. Uh, so in line with your different. opposite philosophy on everything. Yes. That just works. It just works. My deal is I want to make natural products, but I want to make them better than the chemical competition. Wow. So it's a no-brainer. Everybody just needs to have these now. Yeah. <laughs> like no chemicals, smells great. It's a ritual. Packaging is beautiful. So. Thank you. So pretty. It's and really fun. It's so much fun. It's gorgeous. I'm really, really proud of that brand. I wanted to create a brand also with the lowest carbon footprint because I created Poopery 12 years ago and while we're as sustainable as possible, I knew that if I created a new brand, I would do it differently. Yeah. So I hired sustainability experts and we really looked at every piece. Wow, that's so mindful and like just, uh, we need to support that. Everybody support that. That's oh, where we should be putting our you. money, sustainability and- It's a beautiful it's fantastic. brand. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, thank you, Susie, for letting us into your home letting us into your heart, showing yeah. us just everything that you do and really teaching us some valuable things that I know I'm going to use. I'm sure everybody else at home has learned something too that they can incorporate into their lives. So thank well, you. Thank you for doing what you do. It's fabulous. <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you.